Hi, welcome back to Will Candles. My name is Sherry, and my videos are all about making candles in the candle business. About this time, you would normally hear the little musical intro, um, and then we would get into what the video is going to be about today. So today, um, we're going to do it a little bit differently. So I want to um, share some Im important information with you today. For those of you who don't know how I started Will Candles, it is because this Tuesday will be three years that my eldest son, William, passed away from a very rare form of cancer called synovial sarcoma. So I was debating whether I was going to share this information today, and I had put a TikTok up. Back in 2020, shortly after he passed away, um, kind of on my grieving slash therapy um, journey, and I was going back and forth. And the funny thing is today, I got a pop-up notification from TikTok, and it was someone liking that video. And I'm thinking, okay, is that affirmation that I'm supposed to be sharing this information? So I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it. But we are going to talk about adding color to candles today. On April 25th of 2020 is when my son passed away. Due to COVID, his funeral services were delayed. And that's when everything was breaking loose with all of that. So we wasn't able to have his funeral services until May the 20th of 2020. The day after May 20th, um, on May 21st, my divorce was finalized. So needless to say, I was going through a really, really tough time. So the first thing I want to talk to you about um, is what is synovial sarcoma? It is a rare cancer that starts in the soft tissues. So some of the early symptoms would be pain, swelling, difficulty breathing, and a growing of a mass. And that's how it started in my son. He had a mask, oh, about maybe this big around in his left thigh. And he was um, treated for everything else but cancer. And I didn't realize it two years later because he was an adult at that time. So he wasn't sharing all his medical information. But at the bottom of the very first x-ray, where his life probably could have been spared, at the bottom of that x-ray, it said, possible sarcoma. I don't know how it was missed. I don't know how many doctors looked at that and just didn't even know what sarcoma is, maybe because of its rarity. Um, but we looked into, um, his records. I had requested his records from everyone. They were treating him for muscle sprains from just, you name it. It was everything else except for the cancer. By the time we got to the James Cancer Center, which is here in Columbus, Ohio, that small mass had grown to almost the size of a small football. And it had already metastasized to both of his lungs. Also want to um, recognize a young lady named Miriam. Miriam had the same cancer um, that my son had and she had reached out to him through a, a synovial sarcoma YouTube video that I had done and they were kind of support buddies and they would talk to each other and um, at the time when he passed she would you know send her condolences and, and message me and we stayed in touch and then um, she was actually um, celebrating her cancer being gone, being cancer free. They had removed her um, infusion port. And uh, I don't know what happened. It's such a rare and such an aggressive cancer. But within three to four months of her celebrating being cancer free, the cancer came back in such a vengeance that she also passed away. The best, best defense against this type of cancer is actually early detection. So I say this to say, this happens often in children and young adults. There are older adults that do get um, synovial sarcoma. But if you notice something, if, if something just doesn't feel right, go check it out. And if you need to have a second opinion, Go ahead and have a second opinion. Um, I'm going to link down below this video 
the information to the James Cancer Hospital here. There is a phone number called the James Line, and it is 1-800-293-5066. Or if you need to make an appointment, it is area code 614-293-5066. And, um... Yeah, that's a tough one to talk about. So I had this, I heard this song by Whitney Houston and it's called, I Didn't Know My Own Strength. And that was one of the songs. There were two songs that carried me through this time. Well, one song primarily while I was going through it before my son passed. And then this song, I Didn't Know My Own Strength was kind of what I held on to after he passed. So I'm going to link that TikTok that, I received a notification about today below this video. I'm going to take a moment to collect myself and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about how to add color to your candles. Okay, so as promised, we are ready to start talking about how to add color to our soy candles, um, which I guess could work for paraffin candles as well, since I'll have a little bit of that information in here. Okay, so I have in front of me, I have three different ways um, that we're going to talk about adding these colors to. But before I get started with that, I want to talk about some do's and some don'ts. So I'm going to tell you, uh, the big, big do is make sure that your candle wax is at least 185 degrees. The other big do is add the dye before you add your fragrance oil, because what's going to happen when you add your fragrance oil? The temperature is going to drop in your wax. So, and also your fragrance oil can kind of make the colors sometimes, um, not every time, but kind of sometimes be off or change it just a little bit. So you wanna make sure that you do that. So I'm gonna look over here at my notes real quick and make sure I don't miss anything. Um, also, when you're dyeing candles, if you're using soy wax, you're never gonna get that deep, rich color that you will see as compared to when you are adding dye to paraffin wax. So when you go into the store and you see all those deeply colored um, candles, more than likely they are a paraffin blend or they are a paraffin wax. Because for some reason the natural um, waxes just won't um, die to that depth of color. So always remember that when you're adding it. So, okay, what else, what else? Here is some big do not do's. Number one, only use dyes that are intended for candle wax use. There are some dyes out here that could actually be flammable, so you don't wanna do that. Also, do not use food color. Food coloring is meant for food. It is not meant for candle wax dyeing. It's not going to, if you were to take a candle and have it 185 degrees and put the, the um, food coloring in, you're gonna see it is not even gonna combine. It's it's not gonna act and perform anything like the dyes that are intended for candle wax. Do not use crayons. The particles found in crayons are too big for that candle to perform the way it's supposed to perform. It's not gonna be able to pull up the candle wax fuel and burn as it is. It is probably going to fizzle out Rel relatively quick, even if it burns for a few minutes. You're, you're going to notice right away. And make sure you do not add too much color. Too much color could change the performance of your candles. And also, when you are making candles, let's say you're using this particular wax, this particular fragrance, and this particular dye, make sure that you always test, test, test. I cannot emphasize enough. Test your candles before selling them. I mean, well, if you're giving them away, people really can't complain about that. But if you are selling them either online or at festivals or different things, you will want to make sure that your candles are performing well. So be careful when um, adding too much color. Also, just check the manufacturer's suggestions and um, 
they will give you the guidelines to go by. So for today's video, I'm going to go ahead and this is Summer Breeze Liquid Dye from Candle Science. So this is the color that I'm going to be using and this is a one ounce bottle and we're going to be using this for our example, how to dye or how for our example of how to add color to your candle. Okay, so this is the Summer Breeze Liquid Candle Dye from Candle Science and this is a one ounce bottle and it says according to my notes that a one ounce bottle can dye up to 125 pounds of wax okay so i ordered these from the flaming candle and inside of this one this is sage green these are dye chips and these are good for when you are trying to dye a smaller amount of wax and it helps you control how much um, dye that you're actually putting into. So one of these chips, one of these chips can dye one pound of wax. And as you can see right there, they're highly concentrated in this little, um, little dye chip that you get. So, and for the record, one pound of wax is 453 grams. So you can calculate that out as you are, um, preparing to, depending on how many candles you're making and how many wax that you have prepared for your candle making. So that is the sage green. This is the melon dye. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. Again, these are the chips and one chip dyes. Okay, so that doesn't look anything like melon. So it'll be interesting to see what it looks like when you actually um, add it to candle wax. And this is burgundy dye chips. So I expect a deep, deep red for these. And again, this dye is one pound of wax. One pound of wax is 453 grams. And let's say that your measurements fall somewhere in between. You could kind of gauge it and kind of, um, that's the burgundy. That's relatively dark. Okay, so these are um, candle chips, diamond shape, and all of these are from the flaming candle. Okay, so these are the candle blocks that you hear everyone talking about. And I got these from Candle Science. So let's take a look at the canary yellow dye. So one block actually dyes two pounds of soy or four pounds of paraffin wax. And as you see, it goes a lot further in paraffin wax than it does in soy. And so this is a bag, this is actually two chips. So you would break that in half or cut it in half. And one of these blocks, not both of them, just one, would do two pounds of soy and four pounds of, or four pounds of paraffin wax. Okay, but for today's purpose, we are not making that many candles. We are making two candles so that I can demonstrate to you how you go about dyeing and making colors lighter or darker. So there you have it. There's your options. And this is the one that we are going with. Okay, so we have checked the temperature on our wax and it is just slightly above the 185. And we are going to start out, since this is two candles at 372 grams, we're going to start out with three drops of the Summer Breeze liquid candle dye. So there's one, two, and three. And you want to make sure that you mix. Ooh, that is so, so rich. That is a beautiful color. So, so rich. Make sure you stir, and make sure you stir this at least for a minute because you definitely will notice if your candle dye is not all the way mixed thoroughly. So stir at least for a minute. Isn't that pretty? I can't wait to see how it turns out. So what we're going to do is once we get this um, mixed in at th three drops, I'm only going to go as high as five um, because that would kind of fall in the range of the 372 grams. So I'm gonna dab a little bit of this on the paper. Hopefully I don't make too much of a mess. And that will be your true indicator of 
um, exactly what shade this shade of blue is going to be at three. So what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to set this aside. So we're going to go ahead and pour the one. And this is with the three drops. Pour nice and slow. Now this color will not stay this dark and this rich once it starts to cool. Okay. And now I'm going to add one more drop into this, oh, very small amount. So let's hope we don't overkill. I just wanted you to be able to see the differences in the colors with just a little additional candle dye added. Okay, so I'm going to put this on the paper as well. And let's get that over here. Try to get it close to it as possible without dripping over it. And you want to stir this again at least for one minute. Okay, here we go. So that would be with the extra drop. So when those dry, we'll be able to see if there's a major difference. I shouldn't say dry, I should say cool. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to lay this on there actually, and pour the second candle. Well, I may have over poured the first one. So we're going to remember that the first candle has a little more wax in it than the second candle. And we are going to let those. You can definitely see how this is getting lighter. And then this is just a shade or two darker. So we'll be able to tell more about the color difference when these candles actually cool. Okay, so the candles have just about cool. They're not all the way cool. Um, so I'm going to show you on the paper where we compared. So here you can see where it is a little bit lighter. So this would be the first um, candle that we poured with the three drops in two um, for the amount of wax for two candles. And then this is the second one, which is slightly darker. I hope you can see that. And that would have been where we added the extra drop of um, candle dye. So here are the candles. Hopefully the glare from my ring light won't show up too bad. This is the first candle, which should be a tad lighter. And this is the second candle where we added the additional drop. So if you can see. And also I noted that the reason why the candle waxes didn't amount, I forgot about. We didn't put fragrance in these because I really just wanted to demonstrate the color to you. So this one is slightly lighter, slightly darker. So you will have to test your candles, play around with the amounts, make sure that you stay within your manufacturer's guidelines and don't overdo the candle dye because you could um, damage how well your candle is going to perform. So just a few last minute tips. Um, these small chips or small diamonds and sometimes even candle um, dye comes in like a powder form. So you'll want to make sure that you read all the manufacturer's instructions and um, just stay within your own guidelines and test, test, test your candles. The other good thing about um, the candle blocks is when you're, you're trying to dye a larger amount, I would actually take these candle blocks and I would take and chip away at them and make them easier to dissolve in the hot wax so it's not taking as long. And also make sure that you are heating your wax to a minimum of 185 degrees before you add your candle dye. And also make sure that you add your candle dye before you add your fragrance oil. The liquid um, candle dye drops is the technique that I prefer. It's just easier for me to um, deal with. I don't have to worry about making sure that it's completely dissolved. Um, just, you know, stir for that one minute and you will be good. Um, also note that when you're adding color, 
that you may notice some more frosting. And frosting is definitely a normal part of the candle making process, especially when you're doing soy candles. Just know that it does not interfere with how your candle performs and that you're just going to be, it's going to be more noticeable because you're using colors. The one thing that I could say is pay attention to your pour temperatures and um, also maybe warming your candle jars may help a little bit. But frosting is normal and even after you burn soy candles or coconut soy candles once or twice, you may see like a roughy kind of bumpy surface. That's normal. That's the way these candles are. And trust me, the benefits of staying natural versus um, dealing with a few roughy, bumpy looks, the way the candle looks, it doesn't interfere with the candle's performance. So that's a pretty good trade-off. So some of the candle techniques that I also use with color includes marbling. So here are a couple candles. They're actually the same candle. I just tested them with um, some different colors, but this is my bergamot musk. And that is basically the marbling effect that I gave it with a black dye. And here is the same candle. Um, I was playing around with some different colors, just seeing from a marketing perspective what would look the best. But that is what it looks like. And then if you turn it around, and that is the marbling effect. And in this case, the frosting actually looks good. It actually gives this candle texture and if you want to see what it looks like on the inside you can have a look in there but these candles mm, and they smell so good these candles sell very well a lot of people as soon as they see them they fall in love with these candles so the marbling technique is one of the techniques that i will be showing you somewhere down the road um okay so i think i've touched on everything um if i didn't if I left something out important, I'll put it in the notes down below the video. And always, whenever you're watching my videos, make sure that you take a look at the notes. I also have links down there if you're looking for um, candle making equipment. But I will put the link for the synovial sarcoma cancer below. And just so that you know, the James Cancer Hospital, also the Cleveland Clinic here in the state of Ohio, are two of the top hospitals in the world that treat synovial sarcoma and many of the sarcoma cancers. So if you come across anyone that, you know, is diagnosed with um, sarcoma, please, please reach out to one of these two hospitals. The James Cancer is where my son was treated. Um, also, I'm trying to think. Okay, so I'll, I'll just link that information down below. Also, I will link the full version of the song, I Was Not Meant to Break, from Whitney Houston, so that you can watch it on YouTube. I mean, the words are so powerful. And it doesn't matter if you need a little extra strength in your life, some support in your life, you're going through some different things. I mean, sometimes I say, hey, get yourself a theme song. <laughs> and, and that's pretty much what I would do. And also, I won't forget to put the link to the TikTok. Don't judge me on my TikTok channel. I was learning how to do it. Also, if you see a couple of shorts on my channel right now, I don't know how I can like shoot a whole full length video, but for some reason, I am really struggling to do these little 30 second, 60 second videos. So I am trying, I'm working on the shorts thing. They say that they're really gonna be um, something popular in the future on uh, YouTube. So. I'm, I'm going to be practicing that. But um, thank you once again to all my subscribers um, and, the, and the ones that are already there, the new ones that are coming in. And thank you, thank you, thank you for your wonderful comments. Um, and again, I used candle making as therapy for myself. I did not intend to start a business. Um, I just, in well, long story short, it worked and it was busy work. It kept my mind busy, kept my hands busy and um, really got me through some of the toughest parts of the grieving process. So another good reason for you to pick up candle making as a hobby, um, not to mention you could make some, some money on the side. So yeah, everybody these days, especially after COVID has a little side hustle. 
So that's it. That wraps up this video. So make sure that you still check below for the links that I'm going to be leaving. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please feel free to do so at this time. And when you subscribe, make sure that you hit that little bell down there. And that's it. Thank you for listening to my stories and um, just sharing this journey with me. So without further ado, thanks for watching. Bye.